Tonight we're going to discuss the oldest musical instruments in the world. What do we know about them? And what can we learn from them? Now, ironically, just a decade ago, we thought we had found the oldest musical instrument in the world. But the whole time we were sitting on a musical instrument tens of thousands of years older. We just didn't have the forethought to believe it true. Now this particular instrument, I'm sure you can all agree upon, is a flute. And in 2008, an astonishing excavation in the summer of that year at the site of Hofels at the Volger Herd Cave. Here's Hofels in Germany, and here's the cave produced new evidence for Paleolithic music in the form of the remains of one nearly complete bone flute and isolated fragments of three additional ivory flutes. The most significant of these finds, a nearly complete bone flute, was recovered in the basal Argnashian deposit at Holfels Cave in the Ock Valley. This is 20 kilometers west of Ulm. The flute happened to be found in 12 pieces, and the fragments were distributed over a vertical distance of 3 centimeters over a horizontal area of about 10 to 20 centimeters, meaning that it was mostly in place and had only been broken into a few pieces over... 40,000 years. This flute is by far the most complete of all the musical instruments ever recovered from the caves of Swabia. The preserved portion of the bone flute from Holfels has a length of 21.8 centimeters and a diameter of 8 millimeters, and you're looking at it. The flute preserved five finger holes. The surface of the flute and the structure of the bone are in excellent condition and reveal many details about the manufacture of the flute. The maker carved two deep V-shaped notches into the end of the instrument, presumably to form the proximal end of the flute into which the musician blew. The fine density in this stratum is moderately high, with much flint-napping debris, worked bone and ivory as well, bones of horse, reindeer, and mammoth, cave bear, ibex, as well as burnt bone. No diagnostic human bones have been found in the deposits of the Swabian Argnation, but we assume that modern humans produced the artifacts from the basal Argnation deposits shortly after their arrival in the region, following a migration up the Danube Corridor. The maker of the flute carved the instrument from the radius bone of a griffin vulture, Gips fulvus, and you're looking at a specimen here. This species has a wingspan between 230 and 265 centimeters and provides bones hollow bones, ideal for large flutes. Griffin vultures and other vultures are documented in the upper Paleolithic sediments of the Swabian caves. The technology for making an ivory flute is much more complicated than making a flute from a bird bone. This process requires forming the rough shape along the long axis of a naturally curved piece of ivory, splitting it open along one of the bedding planes of the ivory, carefully hollowing out the halves, carving the holes, and then rejoining the halves of the flute with an airtight seal. Given the tendency of delicate ivory artifacts to break into many pieces, it is not unusual to find isolated pieces of such artifacts, as we see here. The ivory bones were in much worse preservation than the bird bone. Now, the 10 radiocarbon dates 
from the basal argnation fall between 31,000 and 40,000 years before present. Available calibrations and independent controls using other methods that are not radiocarbon-based indicate that the flutes from Hofels predate 35,000 calendar years ago. Apart from the caves of Swabi and Jura, there are no convincing evidence of musical instruments predating 30,000 years before present. Or are there? Now, the Gleisen Klosterl, or these caves in Germany, range all the way back from 43 to 30,000 years. And this, these discoveries of these flutes were thought to be the oldest instruments in the world. And this was from a 2008 excavation. The only problem is they're wrong. There's a Neanderthal flute that was discovered in 1995 during a systematic archaeological excavation led by the Institute of Archaeology of the Research Center of Slovenia. And it's a famous flute. It is, in fact, the oldest musical instrument in the world that we know of, predating the German Jura flutes, which were probably Homo sapien. And the Homo sapiens well, that created these flutes from birds and ivory, probably got their information from the Dieve Babe flute in Slovenia, from the Neanderthals. And that is mind-blowing. They didn't just steal the flute and try to make their own. They had to have deep knowledge and had to have been sharing information with this other species of hominid between 60 and 40,000 years ago. At the same time, we have the largest magnetic excursion in over 150,000 years called the Le Champ, which causes a mass extinction and eliminates Neanderthal at 41,500 years ago. The same time these flutes were being made, by Homo sapiens. I wonder what was going on in these caves and in the 20,000 years leading up to the extinction of Neanderthal. Now, the Dieve Bebe flute, also called Tidla Dibab, is a cave bear femur, unlike the other flutes. So what we now know is that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens made flutes out of many bone and ivory objects. And if we know of these three different types of flutes, there must have been many, many other types of musical instruments at the same time, including drums, perhaps. But I do digress. The Neanderthal flute had been around for decades and according to the archaeological community, these holes were produced by hyenas, not by humans, not by Neanderthals, not by any hominids. It's impossible for them back then in the 1990s to believe that hominids 40, 50, even 60,000 years ago were capable of making an instrument. That is the sad state of science and archaeology, and this channel aims to unveil the lies that is perpetrated in these, well, less than complete sciences. And in just a few decades, we push back the oldest instrument from 20,000 to 40,000, and now 60,000 years ago. And scientists have stepped up to the plate. We can now hear the world's oldest instrument, the 60,000-year-old Neanderthal flute. Piščal iz divih bab je izjemno pomembna zaradi tega, ker soustvarja pravzaprav diskusijo o učlovečenju, o tem, kako je človek postal človek.
spreminja naše predhodno pomankljivo enostransko gledanje na neandertalce kot umsko zaostale predhodnike sodobnega človeka, divje barbare, ker to enostavno ni bilo tako. In 1995, archaeologist Ivan Turk discovered a unique perforated bone in the Divya Barbe cave in Slovenia. The artifact was found in the middle of a Paleolithic layer of earth, near the remains of a Neanderthal fireplace, stone and bone tools. Skratka, gre za predmet, ki je narejen iz stegnenice, iz femorja, mladega jamskega medveda, eno do dve leti starega, in tisto, kar je na njem Nenavadnega je to, da je perforiran. Perforiran je namreč za štirimi luknjami. Te luknje so poravnane v isto v linijo. In poleg tega je rob na eni strani, koliko je ohranjen tega predmeta, priostren. Extensive experimental research discarded the hypothesis that the perforations were actually the result of an animal bite. They confirmed that they were handmade and that the bone was a Neanderthal flute between 50 to 60,000 years old. This made it the world's oldest musical instrument. Uh, ja, kar zadeva predmet, ne, uh, 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 eksperimenta, skratka stegnenica, mladiča jamskega medveda smo uporabili stegnenico današnjega rjavega medveda in sicer mladičev, kot zobovje, ki je pa služilo za eksperimentalne poskuse, kako bi lahko take luknje nastale, pa smo uporabili zobovje hijene, sodobne hijene in zobovje jamskega in današnjega medveda in se je izkazalo, da je pravzaprav take vrste luknic lahko sposoben narediti zaradi oblike podočnika samo medved, ne pa hijena ali pa lev. Je pa ostane dilema ta štirje poravnanju vrsto in luknice, ki so na sredi stegnenice, zaradi tega, ker luknice so žvečenje, ne pač grizanje kosti je nekaj, česar se živa v vedno. You can clearly see from this video how clueless the archaeologists are. They don't want to believe that the spacing has to do with music, but when you line it up like any flute maker would, the spacing is consistent with notes on a scale. So these music makers were beyond fantastic. And some of these objects we're talking about are beyond reproach. We have no idea how they understood how to make these objects 60,000 years ago, if it were Neanderthal and the cave bear flute, or these created by Homo sapiens in Germany 20,000 years later, 40,000 years before present. We're making music in the woods as hunter-gatherers. Now, these finds demonstrate that music played an important role in paleo life, period. It is so difficult to preserve an object like this, let alone multiple objects from 60,000 to 40,000 years ago. We have almost no bones from humans from this time. It's very limited. And now we have multiple musical instruments from 60,000 to 40,000 years ago. This changes everything. The fact that we were an advanced culture tens of thousands of years ago, playing music in the wilderness, well, speaks volumes. And you can play your own Neanderthal bone flute. Here on Etsy, I found the Neanderthal bone flute, the Dieve Bebe replica of the 60,000-year-old musical instrument. Albeit, it probably was longer and had more notes, but we saw from the video that you can play it. If you want to know more about my credentials, you can find me at ResearchGate under my Christian name, David Mariello, aka Diamond the Dave on Twitter, and you can find out my bio and some of my scientific papers from decades ago. And that's a boom to knowledge. I hope you got something out of the video. 
So much is unknown about our past and so much is being revealed in recent times. There is so much more to learn and understand about our past. If you have any questions, leave them below or ask me on our new platform, 5.me backslash diamond. Be safe. We love you. And that's a boom to knowledge.